Can MEPs claim back expenses for helipad maintenance and uh, duck houses? Can MEPs claim back expenses for helipad maintenance and duck houses? <laughs> Nigel Farage. No, it's a completely different system. As such, MEPs don't actually get expenses, they get allowances. So there is an allowance to employ staff, and that's the lion's share of the money. But the most controversial one, perhaps, is the general expenditure allowance. And that is a lump sum of money that MEPs are given. It's £3,500 every month that is paid directly into your bank account uh, with no, no tax implications. And that is for your activity within the member state, within the constituency. So it's for us to be here in the UK. But the twist is that every day you're in Brussels, you're paid a couple of hundred euros just for turning up and just for signing on. And it's the worst system I can believe, because the harder you work, actually being out there, meeting constituents, holding meetings, engaging with people, the harder you work, the less you earn. So personally, had it been a receipted system, I would be, I'd be far better off, because as somebody that spends more of his time in the UK than I spend in Brussels, I'm, I've, I've been the most active MEP uh, in Britain, uh, I've, I've spent far more than the allowance. It's a rotten system, but it's very, very good for people who move to Brussels, who live there for five years, and don't do a damn thing in their constituencies. And when occasionally people say, well, who is your MEP? Why are they so anonymous? Well, it's because the financial system encourages them to spend their life generally on pretty useless committees based in Brussels and Strasbourg. Mm -hmm. What were, what were your expenses last year? The, the average, I mean, it depends no, on your, what you yours, add in. Yours, yeah. There aren't expenses, David. We all get given how the much, same set of allowances. How much did you take in allowances last year? Just by comparison. It's just over £200,000 per annum for each MEP. It's a huge sum. Hang on, hang on, I haven't pocketed this. You know, I've spent this on running a regional office. I've spent this on employing staff. But, but, but which, whichever way you look at it, what we should be debating is that it costs the British taxpayer one and a half million pounds a year for each MEP, and that is the tip of the iceberg compared with the cost of the European Union to the British economy. And the sadness is we're so focused on Westminster and all the ghastly things that have happened there that a week out from a very important national election when we're talking about a place in which 75% of our laws are made, we're not having a okay. proper debate about the costs of the EU, and we should be. Hi. Um, if what Nigel says is true, that 75% of British laws are made in Europe, why shouldn't we be encouraging our MEPs to be in Brussels rather than back in the UK promoting their own political parties and their own personal in, in, uh, like popularity okay. and interests? Daniel Hannan. Well, that, that depends on whether you're happy for 75% of our right. laws to be made in Brussels. Passed by, well, according to a, the only study that's been done by this, Caroline, which is by the German Federal Justice it's Ministry, is 84% well, of actually, legislation in the rubbish. member states. And if you know better, why don't you tell well, us? Because your you, government has I can, I can give refused you an, I can, to put a Daniel, figure when it's asked the question. I can give you an example. The trouble in Brussels is, of course, as Nigel says, there are no receipts involved. So the problem is not people employing members of their own family. The problem is maintaining members of the family on the payroll without them doing any work. Now, I've got to say, compared to what happens in the EU, the expensive scams in Westminster, about which we are becoming rightly exercised, are positively Lilliputian. People across the channel are looking at the Daily Telegraph and wondering that such pooterish complaints about patio heaters uh, uh, and uh, uh, you know, sofas can be the stuff of political scandal when what happens in the European Parliament is gargantuan compared to that. But from July, there is going to be reimbursement on the basis of costs actually incurred. So it is possible to get changed. But Thank you. But with a salary compensation? Yeah. We can't, David, yeah. let's just yeah. tell them. Yeah. What, please, we yeah. must talk to people. MEP salaries are going to go up. Right from the, after these elections by 45%. Are you all happy with that? No, well, that, but at least you know it now, yeah. don't you? All right. The, the woman in uh, one, two, three, four, fifth row with red hair, yes. The thing is, how much cost uh, to the British people the fact that they are part of uh, the European Parliament? Four billion pound a day? It's uh, ridiculous. What, 40 million. Oh, 40 million. It's 40 million pounds a day, there is. and that's from the government's official figures. All right, I want... Uh, let's... let's uh, uh, hold on a second. Uh, what? The French vote no. The Dutch vote 
No. Uh, the Irish vote no. Because no is not an answer, we are going to make them vote again. Our population too stupid to make a decision by themselves. It is a false distinction if you imagine that what happens in Europe is something that takes place across the channel and that doesn't affect our domestic affairs. And this is where I come back to the bulk of legislation that comes from Brussels. You know, all sorts of issues that people raise domestically on the doorstep turn out to be caused by EU legislation. So the issue of weekly versus fortnightly bin collection, that's the EU's landfill directive. <coughs> The issue of home information packs. That, the centerpiece of the HIP is the Brussels requirement for a uh, ecological survey of every dwelling. I think in light of what's happened, then maybe one of the matters we need to look at is whether there does need to be a recall. Uh, should MPs behave in such a way that it brings Parliament and their tenure as an MP into disrepute? Well, if, if they've said they're standing down because of uh, what's been said about their expenses, do you think it, it would be honourable of them to stand down now? Uh, uh, right away, because I mean, what's the point of staying around for another year? Do you know what? I don't even think that MPs know how much money they've claimed. I personally think they should uh, be prosecuted, same as everyone else, same as me. If I do, if I put too many expenses, for example, I'll get prosecuted, I'll go to prison. Why is not the same thing for you guys? The answer to your question is yes. Um, I floated this idea of recall on uh, a sister programme on Radio 4 to this about two weeks ago, and it seems to be catching the mood. The one thing I've noticed, all this talk about reform and the Kelly report and all the rest of it, none of it actually involves the public. You know, the public haven't suddenly lost confidence in politics and politicians because of the expenses scandal. This has been happening for some years. They don't feel they've got a voice. So I do think the ability to call a by-election would be right. And next Thursday, we shouldn't just be having the European elections and some of the county elections. There should be a rash of by-elections taking place right across this country. I've no doubt about that. It's interesting that we had somebody elected on our list who never took his seat as a UKIP MEP because we found out two days after the election that he in fact was facing serious criminal charges. And one of the problems with PR lists, and Dan did mention this earlier, is there's nothing. You can't recall an MEP because they're not elected individually, they're elected on a list. So it's, it's, it's a very difficult... Easy in Westminster at the moment with our system, impossible at the moment with MEPs. Two MEPs out of 12 no, to be mired in financial scandal. Looks to me pretty well, careless. Compared, I'm with, compared with the House of Commons... Compared with the House of Commons... I, I'll tell you what... If, if the Labour and Conservative parties dealt with miscreants as we had, i.e. they're gone immediately, no questions asked, there would be dozens of by-elections taking place next week. Well, so at least when we have a problem, we deal with it. Article 2, Article 2 of the BNP's own party constitution forbids black people from, from becoming party members and for being candidates. In UKIP, of our 69 candidates standing in the European election, we have five black and Asian candidates standing for us. We are a non-racist, non-sectarian party. We would never have anything to do with them. But the answer, sir, to your question is the reason there is such public anger over immigration, and, and frankly I'm not surprised, is that what we did five years ago is we opened the doors to the whole of Eastern Europe. And four parties sitting around this table voted for that, one party sitting around this table did not vote for that. I thought there'd be a vast flood that came from Eastern Europe. Your Home Office Minister at the time said 13,000 a year. It was 1.8 million in the first three years. And, 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 and the answer, sir, the answer is this. The answer is this. The only party that is prepared to say we should have proper border controls, we should operate on the basis of work permits and not have an open door to the whole of Eastern Europe or perhaps even Turkey in a couple of years' time, is the UK Independence Party. And the good news from your perspective is what the opinion polls show is that very few people are going to go out next Thursday and vote the MP. If they feel strongly on the immigration issue, they will vote UK Independence Party, knowing they're voting for a non-racist political party. And the, question, or the question about the BNP, look, I think there is a danger of talking up this party. We're talking about a party that has...
We're talking about a party that has 0.2% of council seats, 0% of parliamentary seats, and yet they are regularly on the front page because well-meaning politicians say, whatever you do, don't vote BNP. We are talking about a party here that is fundamentally anti-British. This, one of the things that has always made me proud of this country is that we have a civic rather than an ethnic conception of nationhood. Twice in the last century, at our moment of greatest need, millions of young men from all over the Empire and Commonwealth were prepared to cross half the world and take up arms for a country that they'd never set eyes on because they wanted to be part of British values, they believed in what right. this country stood for. And a party that denies their patriotism and denies them the equality of the law uh, as British subjects is not a British party.